Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Colleen and this is Our Blessed Life. And today I'm doing another Do A Lesson With Us video. Today we're going to be doing a lesson from Math Lessons for a Living Education, Level 1. I'm using this curriculum with my daughter Sophie who has special needs. She's a first grader this year and I've found this curriculum to be a lot more gentle than what we were using which was the Good and the Beautiful um, Math Level 1. So we actually have switched to this um, after the first several months of school and so I'll let you follow along as we do a lesson in Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1. Okay, so this is Math Lessons for a Living Education Level 1 from Masterbooks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the book before we show the lesson. All right, in the beginning, it shows the scope and sequence. They start with just counting numbers, um, review of numbers 1 through 9. They do patterns. They do, um, they begin place value, um, patterns of tens. Practicing with patterns and shapes. They start addition plus one. Um, then they go further into addition. They introduce squares. They introduce skip counting, counting by twos, addition to ten, counting um, by ten, counting groups, solving for the unknown, counting by fives, telling time, introducing simple fractions, introducing, introducing subtraction, subtraction minus one. Um, review of skip counting, tally marks, and review of numbers um, to 100. So that is the scope and sequence for uh, level one. They do have the suggested daily schedule and they have the uh, days that you can check off. Okay, so this is the very first lesson. Um, Sophie has passed this, but every lesson will have a story that teaches the lesson. And so this lesson one is, is learning numbers zero through nine. So for most children, this would be a review. It was definitely a review for Sophie. Um, and then there's going to be five worksheets here that you would do. So the first day you do the lesson and the first worksheet, and then the rest of the week you do the other worksheets. Um, so we've already done these, but I'm going to flip back. Okay. So for example, this is lesson 10, and it's on place value and patterns of 10. So here's the lesson, and it, it reads like a story. So you read that to the child and, and, and do the, the things that it says to do with them. And then this would be their worksheet for that day. So that would be for um, day 46 or day one of that week. And you can do one per day or more, just depending on how many school days you do in a week. Sometimes the lesson will be two pages, but usually it's just one page. And they will, they will just kind of camp out on that topic. For that whole week, there will be some review mixed in as well. And so then you can see that there's a page for every day. And then this will be exercise five. And then there's going to be some review on here. And then the next week, they'll move on to lesson 11. So that's the way it works with um, Math Lessons for Living Education. So um, if you're used to the Good and the Beautiful or some of the other math programs out there, they have a ton of manipulatives. Masterbooks really keeps it more simple than that. So this is a list of things that you'll need. Some of the manipulatives actually come in the back of the book and they'll tell you to laminate some things. So they've got some cards, um, days of the week cards, a 100 number chart. Um, some of the things I've already taken out because we've already started using them. Some number cards, an addition mat, um, things like that. So those are some of the manipulatives that are just already in the book. But then some other things that it will ask you to have are um, brass fasteners, index cards, contact paper, construction paper, crayons, markers, colored pencil, glue, hole punch, and hole reinforcers, rings to keep flashcards together, a plastic shoebox with a lid to store the manipulatives, and um, stickers to use for flashcards, which are optional, pictures from old magazines, poster board, at least 100 counting items like beans, um, and then three containers for your place value village. We just used a, uh, we just used three cups for that. And then snack size baggies and a, a durable gallon or quart size freezer bag. 
For the place value village, we actually use popsicle sticks uh, tied together with rubber bands to go uh, to, for every group of 10. So that's how the program works, and I'll go ahead and show you our lesson. Right now, Sophie, Sophie is in week nine. Um, we did skip a little bit of the stuff at the beginning of the book when she um, started this program after The Good and the Beautiful because some of it just she already knew. And then at some point I just decided we were just going to do everything. So in the beginning, they do a lot of really simple shapes that you would probably consider more like preschool work. So I skipped a good bit of that with her because she's known that for several years. Um, but I wanted to start over with numbers just because I need her to get a really firm foundation with that. So um, we kind of started back before um, we kind of started back with things that she really already knew well, but I thought that was okay because she kind of needed some easy wins. So um, that's what we're using, and I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. This is something that Sophie struggles with a lot. She, she knows all of her letters, and she knows her numbers to 20, but she really struggles to keep them in the lines properly. All right, so try to pay attention to your lines. So look, this is the top, and this is the bottom. So the zero should go from the top to the bottom. So try to do your best to keep them in the lines, okay? Let's read what it says to do right here. Draw the correct number of circles next to the numbers. The first one has been done for you. So this number is? Three. So they drew one, two, three. This number is? Five. So we need to draw five. Okay, can you count them? How many did you get? I'm five. Well, count and see what you have. Start right here, put your pencil on it. One. Okay, wait. Start with one. Stop. One, two, three, four, five. So did you get the right number? Yeah. You did. So Sophie has dyspraxia and sometimes it's hard for her to put her finger on something and count like like that. So a lot of times I have to put a pencil or my finger on the object and let her count because counting and putting her finger on kind of messes her up. All right, so how many do we have? You have seven, but how many do you need? How many do you need? You need 10, so seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, can you do this one? I can't do seven, it's so hard. No, it's not too hard. You can do one, two. Seven is actually less than 10. Let's just see your best work. I know this is a little bit harder. Okay. You can count while you're doing it. It would help. Mm -hmm. Just right here. Let's see how many you have. You're just drawing circles. You don't know how many you have. I'm just drawing circles. I know, you gotta count how many you have. Okay, let's see. Six. Yeah, you have six. So how many more do you need? Kelly. Yeah, you did it. You just needed one more. Good job, Sophie. No, All right. Not six. 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 Well, it's okay. Let's erase that top part off and it'll look like a circle. Okay? All right, how many do you need? How many you have? That was really good counting today, Sophie. Four. You did it. So you can do it. It's not too hard. One, two, three, four. She, this kind of thing for her, she thinks this is very hard, but she did a good job today. Mm -hmm. um, some days this is a lot harder than it was for her today. Um, so with her special needs, it kind of goes day to day. We have good days, we have bad days. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder. 
Um, but I like this program because I feel like it is a lot more gentle than what we were using with the Good and the Beautiful. Although I absolutely love the Good and the Beautiful, it did not seem to be a good fit for Sophie right now. So that's why we're using this. Okay, we're on day 44 and I just wanted to, this is still our review week and I just wanted to show an example of a hands-on activity. So this is um, working on place value and this is a review of the numbers one through 20 in place value. All right, Sophie, it says use your place value village to count 20 items. We like to use popsicle sticks instead of beans because it's just easier for us because beans are little. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Can you um, go ahead and count? How many, first of all, how many ones can go in the ones house? Nine. Nine, so can you count to nine? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. That's three, four, mm -hmm. six is when you get a new one, seven, Eight. How many? Nine. nine. Okay, you have nine. Okay, now we're gonna write our numbers one through nine right here. I'm gonna write them small for you, okay? Okay, you have nine, right? Where do those go? Okay, so put them in the one's house. Oh. Mm hmm. Maybe they be Mm hmm. How many do you have in the one's house? Nine. What if somebody comes, wants to go and join them? Can they still live there? No, there's no more room, right? So what do we do with 10? We put 10 like this, right? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I almost ran out of room, didn't I? Yeah. All right, so this is in the tens place. The one and the two for 20 are in the tens place. So let's go ahead and count to 20. So we have nine in the one's house. What do we do now if we need one more? That nine and then that's 10. How many do you have now? All right, but they can't go in there. So what do we do? Do you remember what we do? We I move do them. it. I we do bundle it. them up because they have to go as a group. I have to go to me. Okay. So bundle them up and then show me where they go. Good. Uh huh. Good. So put them in the tens. So 10, look, has one 10, and how many ones does it have? Nine. Nine. It has zero. So 10 looks like this one 10 and zero ones. Now let's make 11. Show me how 11 looks. 11, 11 has how many tens? Mm -hmm. And how many ones? So what do you need to do to make it be 11? You need one and where's it go? Mm -hmm. No, not there, this is hundreds. Yeah, so is that I'll show 11? Yeah. Good. Now here's the tricky part. You've got nine ones and he wants to join them. So what do we do to make 20? What do we do? He can't go in there because there's already nine in there. What do we do? What should we do? What do we normally do when there's nine and we need another one? Do we leave them in here or do we take them out? Take them out. Take them out and then what do we do? I want to take them out, Mom. Okay. What do we do? Take them out. Take them out and do what? Ten. What do we, yeah, we make ten. And we, what do we do with them? Yeah, we have to bundle them up though. They have to go as a group. They're a family. They're a family, so they have to stay together. I'm good at these. Okay, now how many do we have now? Ten. We have two groups of ten, so that makes the number what? Twenty. Twenty. Because twenty is two groups of ten, and how many ones? None. None. Yeah, Sophie, yeah. last question. In the numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19, the one stands for a group of what? Okay. 10. Very good. Up top. You did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. 
Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.